Good afternoon everyone. Thursday afternoon, time to prepare for my sermon. And the sermon this week is for the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time, Cycle A. What is God saying to us today? What does He want us to hear this coming Sunday? Well, let's have a look at His Word. Where are we reading His Word from? The first reading is taken from the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 to 10. What is the context of the prophet? To whom is he preaching? What is the situation of the people and of the country at that time? It's always important for us to have a sense of that. What is the context? Because God speaks to a context. He speaks into a concrete reality always. So if we understand the context of the prophet, then we have an understanding of what God is really saying and what God really wants us to hear. So what was the situation of the people at the time of the prophet Zechariah? Well, they had been invaded from the powers in the north, and so they were an oppressed people. They, their land was occupied. And so they are hoping for a Messiah to come and to restore their land to them and to get rid of the occupying forces. So what kind of liberator do you think they were looking to? They were expecting a Messiah that was powerful, that was able to overthrow this other power. And they would have thought that such a Messiah would have come on a horse with chariots, a symbol of power and authority and speed. Horses have that, conjure that sense for us, don't, don't, don't they? But the prophet says he will come on a donkey. A donkey is a humble animal, eh? a rather lowly sort of beast. So what kind of messiah or liberator were they to look out for? So that's the first reading, the prophet Zechariah. And then the psalm is a hunt, Psalm 145. Of course, the psalms were written before the prophet Zechariah. But as always, even today, the Psalms speak to our situation as well. And this Psalm would have spoken to the people of Zechariah's time. I extol you, my God and King. God is the ruler. There may be civil political leaders, and they may not always be just and good, compassionate or understanding, especially when they are foreign forces. But if we keep our focus on God, we will discover that He is the compassionate, loving, caring God, and that He does mighty deeds in different ways. And so this psalm would have spoken to the people of Zechariah's time, as it speaks to us today, as we battle with living in really difficult times and in difficult uh, political and civil uh, times as well. Hey? Um, politics throughout the world seems topsy-turvy. And so the, this psalm speaks to us too about where we find our true king, our true leader. And then the letter to the Romans St. Paul's letter to the Romans, we're continuing that at this time. And so it's taken from chapter 8, verse 9, and 11 and thir to 13. And then the Gospel is taken from St. Matthew's Gospel. Of course, we're in cycle A, 
and it's chapter 11, verses 25 to 30. If we stop and think a little bit about this gospel passage, we'll see that it's nearly a bit shy of halfway through Matthew's gospel. And it has a sense of Jesus taking stock of his ministry, sort of looking back and saying, well, how am I doing here? And as he reflects, he reflects that the powerful, the influential, the strong, the wise have not been attracted by his message, by the good news that he has come to preach. Instead, they seem to have completely rejected it and are giving him a hard time. It is the poor, the weak, the sick, the suffering who are coming to him. And they are not coming in huge numbers either, eh? And perhaps some of them are coming not to hear the good news, not to hear about the kingdom of God, but instead to get healed or get some food. So perhaps Jesus is sitting there thinking, hmm, I'm not being very successful here. But I think he is being successful, huh? Because the theme that comes out this Sunday is that the kingdom of God, the message of God, the Messiah, is not how we would expect the kingdom to be, the Messiah to be, the good news to sound. Instead, it is about uh, meekness, humility, humble service. All those things are in stark contrast hey, to the things of the world. And in many ways, Jesus hints at that by speaking about the wise of the world as opposed to himself who reveals the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God is very different to the wisdom of the world. The things of God are very different to the things of the world. So we expect powerful, strong, intelligent leaders. And yet the King, Jesus, the Messiah, the Liberator, comes on a donkey. And that has echoes to King David and King Solomon. If you remember, they came in to their city, Jerusalem, on a donkey. In those days, a donkey was the symbol of kingship, of power, and not the horse. And so the fact that Jesus models himself rather on David and Solomon, this idea of kingship, instead of powerful horses and chariots, indicates very clearly that the Messiah and the ways of God are very different to the ways of the world. And there's a message for us there, isn't there? In this time of upheaval in society and in politics, where there is much division and anger, what are we looking for? What kind of leader are we looking for? Also, we're challenged to think, in what do we put our trust? The things of the world or the things of God? And in the second part of the gospel, Jesus offers the great invitation. Come to me. Maybe you're saying, all oh, you people who are not listening to me, come to me. And he says those words to us. Come to me. This great invitation. Come to a different way. A different way of living in the world. Come to me that gives you rest from all these things that crowd in on you and demand your attention and cause upset and anger and hurt. I will give you rest. I will give you peace. And that invitation to that wisdom of God has echoes 
from the Old Testament, the wisdom literature of the Old Testament that was about the wisdom of God, the invitation to experience that wisdom of God. Our God is not weak. Our God is not completely powerless. Of course, He is all-powerful. However, He exercises that power in a humble, servant-like way. And obviously, as His disciples, the disciples of Jesus, we are to mirror that. We are to copy that. We are to live that in our world today. Of course, we are weak and frail, eh? and we, we are attracted by the things of the world, by power and influence. Those things attract us. And when we see grand leaders with saying wonderful things, and yeah, we sometimes get taken in by them, eh? because we are weak. And that brings me to the second reading, St. Paul's letter to the Romans. St. Paul, in chapter 7, had said, yeah, we are weak. We are frail. St. Paul understands human nature. But here in chapter 8, which we read from uh, this Sunday, he says, we, can, we can't keep using that excuse that we're weak, that we're just human. Why? Because we've been given the Spirit of God. And that Spirit should help us to discern power and influence and to recognize the power and influence of God, instead of being sucked in to the power and influence of the world. That Spirit of God has been given to us, and we, we should be able to discern these two different spirits, these two different ways, these two different forms of leadership. And we, we need to take responsibility for that. We can't just keep saying, oh, well, I'm weak and frail and human and, you know, who am I? I'm nothing. No, oh, we need to take responsibility. So St. Paul is challenging us a little bit to look at what we place our trust in. Are we listening to that invitation of God, that invitation of Jesus to a different way, a way that contrasts to the ways of the world. So those are some of my thoughts, some of the things going around in my head as I begin to put my sermon down on paper and in a more structured way. I hope that you too will spend a bit of time before Sunday reading through the scriptures, preparing yourself and listening and trying to discern God's call, God's invitation, but also God's challenge. How do you respond to the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God? Anyway, I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning to celebrate Eucharist together and to break open more God's Word. Take care and be safe. God bless everyone. Bye-bye.